As India rushes to get richer, there's one community which is being left behind. Discriminated against by ancient tradition, and now the victims of modern life with its nuclear families, there are perhaps 33 million widows in India. Many of them are struggling all on their own to keep their families together, to house, feed and clothe their children, and to provide them with education. In the Indian tradition, when a woman is widowed, darkness descends on her life. The darkness lasts until death. She is never allowed to emerge from mourning. Widows are often thrown out of their families, and many seek refuge in pilgrim cities like Varanasi. Traditional family ties are so strong that a wife is expected to go everywhere with her husband. When husbands die, widows are excluded, not just from their families, but from society too and only have God to defend them. They come to Varanasi for the company of other widows and to live on the charity of pilgrims. A husband is all important in traditional society. His wife belongs to him. A wife is bonded to her husband even after his death. Widows are not usually allowed to remarry, and at one stage they were even expected to throw themselves on their husband's funeral pile. This practice has been outlawed for many years, and now is a criminal offence. But still many widows end their lives far from home, on the banks of the Ganges at Varanasi. In villages throughout India, there are young widows who can't take refuge in Varanasi. They have children to bring up and educate without their husband's support or income. Their white saris mark them out from the rest of society. And this isolation limits the chances of finding work for themselves. <laughs> The Trust first started its work in Delhi. The children were carefully selected to ensure that their family's income did not exceed 20 pounds per month and they were not receiving help from any other source. There were no barriers of caste, creed or gender. Gita Kotia was one of the first girls to be selected. Her family barely has any disposable income. They earn less than one pound a day from making envelopes. In spite of her family's poverty, Gita is now able to go to school. She wears the same uniform as any other pupil and nurtures the same ambitions too. Thank you for your invitation, the Shamati Pushpa Watilumba Memorial Trust in memory of what was obviously a very special lady. And what is so important is that this family understand the problems that widows face. And it understands the effect that that has on the children's future and on their potential to fulfill their own lives. Richard Branson, one of Britain's most flamboyant businessmen, agreed to support the trust. When he inaugurated his Virgin Airways service to India, he also inaugurated an in-flight collection. Passengers flying anywhere in the world were asked to contribute. The appeal raised a hundred thousand pounds for Indian widows. 
The Pushpawati Lumba Memorial Trust is setting an example by the successes it has already achieved. Lumba Trust ke sahayata se maine 12 pass ki. Ab main first year bhi kar rahi hu aur textile designing bhi kar rahi hu saath saath. Jo ye scholarship de rahe hain unka main bahut bahut dhanyawad karta hu ki isse mera aage ja ke bhavishya ban sake. It makes me very confident and by this I can be independent. Main Lumba sir ka bahut dhanyawad karta hu. वो ये ऐसे इंसान हैं जो बाहर रहकर भी जिन्होंने भारत के बच्चों के बारे में सोचा। I am thankful to Luma Trust. Securing the future of so many children is a massive task. The Luma Trust has already made a start, but it needs much, much more help from all of us. If the children of millions of poor widows are not to be deprived of their education and have the rest of their lives blighted, widows already bear the burden of their own sorrow. Let us not add the suffering of their children to that burden.